Okay. All right. So uh, consumers, basic consumers in Hatrick and in research, and there's one of our consumers from our uh, for our drug studies in our um, phase one study, Chunky the Groundhog. So I just thought today I'd uh, there's a lot of pressure to to include consumers in research, and I just wanted to be play a bit of devil's advocate here and and flag some of the issues. So. As I said, there's Chunky the Groundhog. He advises us on our animal studies and our phase one studies. So, so we'll keep going. Okay, so what's the place of consumers in HREC and research? So obviously consumers have been involved informally in, in human patient uh, research focus groups for many years in Australia. And you're probably uh, uh, aware that drug companies uh, who are keen to have their drugs subsidised for many years uh, have, have had lobby groups which are their function uh, to government. And uh, sorry, I forgot the acknowledgement. Um, just like to acknowledge the land we're coming from today is the uh, presenting from today is the Ghana people. Sorry, I forgot to do that. And knowledge elders, both past, present, and emerging. So I'll just um, acknowledge that line here. So back to the consumers. So uh, obviously we've had this for a long time, in, uh, in uh, particularly with drugs, in lobby groups. Uh, however, until recently, consumer involvement has never been described as human research guidance document so it's been around for a long time informally uh, and it's been informally it's been now formally gripped up into uh, guidance documents so what are the guidance documents so the first one is the nhmrc statement on consumer and community participation in health and medical research uh, so you've probably all seen that but if you haven't it's an interesting read so the document defines consumer and and a consumer representative and they're in the document, they say the best definition of a consumer is someone who uses health services, which is probably a bit unhelpful because I think everyone in their life has used a health service. So I'm not sure that's a that's a, a workable definition. But anyway, so the document basically sets out how research can best use the consumer. So that's a standing document and uh, well worth a read. Uh, the other one is the revised national statement of July 2023, which I hope you've all uh, read. Uh, have a good look at. So 5.1.4 <clears throat> So uh, now says each institution should be satisfied the human research for which is responsible it adequately takes account of consumer and community per perspectives with reference where relevant to the NHMRC statement. So the, the, the national statement and this other document align national statement saying that uh, the institution should be uh, taking these things into account how it how you do that doesn't say that, uh, so that's up to the institution to decide. So whether that's before, during, or after uh, is, is up to you, I guess, the, up to the institution. So uh, also the National Statement 5.1.30, and those who've read it will know the categories of membership of a HREC have changed. Uh, so the minimum membership is eight. This is 5.130. It must include the following categories. So the chair, we've seen that uh, is, is, is the same. Uh, other responsibilities not impair the HREC's ca capacity to carry out its obligations. However, comma, uh, part B has changed. So the old lay people has been removed and it's been uh, substituted to say two people who bring a broader community or consumer perspective and who have no paid affiliation with the institution. So they've changed it, taken out lay people. I used to like the lay people, but uh, substituted this. So now you need to, these people need a broader community or consumer perspective. So it doesn't t define those words. Um, so that's up to the HREC, I guess, to recruit people who fill, fulfill those requirements. So what are the pros, consumers in research? So the pros, <clears throat> Obviously, it brings research into the current clinical paradigm. So that's patient-centered decision-making, which is uh, uh, the current paradigm. So it has the potential to shape research into what is wanted by the consumer rather than the researcher. So to give you an example, I sat on a panel. Uh, the road accident commissions in each state often give out research funding for results of road accidents, uh, uh, rehabilitation, that sort of thing. So I sat on a panel that... Uh, uh, was giving money for road accident uh, people here in South Australia. And I actually sat in on a focus group of people who've been affected by road accidents and have been injured in road accidents. So the question was, well, what do you regard, what what would you like out of out of human research? And obviously the researchers come to this and say, well, I've got an app put in my application for spinal cord 
improvement, uh, joining a spinal cord, spinal cord research, spinal cord surgery, et cetera, et cetera, um, muscular research, that sort of thing. And it was interesting that in the focus group, uh, none of that was raised. And in fact, one gentleman said all he wanted was a wheelchair that worked properly. He wanted some engineering done in his wheelchair because it wasn't, even though he had a good wheelchair, it didn't seem to work properly and he couldn't maneuver it properly. He wanted a better one. So that's interesting where a consumer says, look, all I wanted was a better wheelchair. I don't want my spinal cord fixed. I know that's um, uh, a utopian dream in the future, but all I wanted was a basic wheelchair. So that's that, that's an example of consumers shaping research rather than what the, what the researcher wants. And also in cancer now, we're looking at the, the prospect of a cure for cancer is probably as far away as it as it it's ever been. However, um, again, in focus groups, people people uh, talk about quality of life improvements in cancer rather than 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 the cure. So again, the focus groups, people say, look, I just want the diarrhea from the chemotherapy to be reduced, or I want the mouth ulcers from the chemotherapy to be reduced. I realise that a cure is a long way away. So consumers can shape uh, research. Um, obviously, National Statement 5 got 130 is the, uh, uh, the, the the consumer and the community people, the old lay people. So these can capture lived experience in research. So people who have lived experience in disease are often um, uh, uh, good to capture their experience and what they require out of human research. So uh, they're the pros. So playing devil's advocate here, uh, just like to um, raise some cons in uh, human research. And so what are the cons? <clears throat> so it has the potential to delay approval of research in my view. Does it add another layer of governance? So a researcher has to go out and consult consumers. How long does that take? Uh, the HREC can ask, well, what was your, uh, when it comes to the meeting, what was your consumer involvement? Uh, they say the X, Y, Z, the, HREC says, well, that's, in our view, not enough, and it goes back to the researcher. So does this have the potential to delay approval of research, you know, adding adding another layer of governance? When we're trying to get rid of layers of governance, you know, we're trying to speed things up. The old lay person is gone, and I rather like the lay person, a person who has no connection. You remember the old definition, no connection to any scientific uh, area or any medical area, uh, lay person. So... Is the consumer equivalent to a lay person? So what does the consumer bring? What does the old lay person bring? Uh, I think that could be uh, maybe, um, maybe a cause for a bit of confusion. Um, and the other cons are that it has the potential for consumers to have a larger voice than is appropriate. So I'm just putting it out there that maybe we need to look at this. I know there's a big push for consumers to be involved in everything, and there have been uh, approaches to involve consumer groups on HREX, which um, obviously is not in accordance with the national statement. And also a consumer may bring an agenda with them to any discussion. So if any of you had run, uh, been, in, been involved in HREC meetings where someone's brought an agenda to the meeting, that can be quite difficult. And as a chair, uh, I've had to deal with that. So just be aware consumers may bring an agenda, uh, wanting a particular line of research to be pushed uh, or a particular thing and may try and shape uh, the HREX discussion to that. So um, also we've had issues with the confidentiality <clears throat> of consumers, and I won't give any details, but consumers may need to understand confidential confidentiality in healthcare. So consumers um, have had cases of consumers going out and not understanding what confidentiality is, and therefore do they need to sign confidentiality agreements when they're involved in pre-discussions in protocols? So you, so um, standard procedure that researchers sometimes get them to sign confidentiality agreements. But I think sometimes consumers may need to understand confidentiality and what that is not, not being in the, in the whole industry. And the last one is potential to skew human research into areas that are not as important. So, you know, again, I'm just putting it out there and playing devil, devil's advocate. So uh, there's a quick down and dirty on um, uh, my views on consumers and the place of consumers in um, uh, healthcare. So um, I'm happy to take questions or answers or. Thanks so much, uh, 
Ian, for doing that. I'm just, we've got some questions coming in, so yeah. I will ask you a couple in a second. So I've been deliberately provocative, as we say, or... <laughs> Um, That's okay. Um, so the to first... elucidate some discussions, and you'll have to. I have to apologise. Just had some COVID go around okay. the office. Um, oh. Had a couple of people off today here in Adelaide in my office with COVID come down. So um, I was going to put a mask on because it could come through the five G, but I'll just realise that people are probably <laughs> smarter than that. <clears throat> so the first question: In order to have educated consumers, are then there are now uh, consumer advocate groups and almost professional consumers. Do you consider yeah. them really consumers? Yes. Well, this is what I was. This is the. This is what I was bringing up. Um, that some consumers, being professionals, bring agendas to meetings. And if you've ever sat in on a meeting where someone's brought in an agenda, so potentially this could uh, result in in HREX rejecting research. I'm just looking at where it could go. No, we don't want that. We want to do something else, and that, that could shape. Uh, so just beware. That's all I'm saying. Consumers, consumers are good, but just beware. And I see a difference between a lay person and a consumer. To be honest, uh, the old the old lay person was not necessarily a consumer, but they brought a different um, aspect to ethical review. And I just see consumers if if they have a lived experience and uh, could could potentially shape things to to another way. But hmm. okay, thank you. Sorry, Gordon has his hand up. Uh, Hi, Ian. Thank, uh, thanks a lot for that. Um, mm. I mean, uh, you know, to take your points, take the points you're being provocative. Um, it's like there's almost a confusion here or conflation of the role of consumers. And I think mm. we would all agree that on an HREC, everyone has lived experience and can contribute that lived experience. Mm. So mm. it doesn't really matter whether you are the, the, old, uh, the old lay person or the chairperson. You know, you all contribute lived experience. But would you mm. agree there's a bit of conflation whereby the role of consumers in research can be at a different point in the process rather yes, than... Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> so I rather like the lay people and on my committees in the last 30 years, I've had people like teachers uh, who are very good, <clears throat> not involved in scientific or healthcare, but they may be the health consumers. So to me, that's a problem. I, lo I like the lay, and lay people have brought some fantastic diversity to our committee, every committee I've been involved in. And, but they are not really consumers. They can be lay people without being consumers. I think you just, again, you just need there's a balance here. And you have to be careful that uh, consumers who have lots of lived experience and nothing else don't. I see lay, the old lay people bring a bit more diversity to review rather than a consumer. But hey, that's the, uh, and of course, the National Assembly doesn't define any of this really. That's, that's not very helpful. Um, anyway, but uh, that's my view. That's okay. Uh, Carrie, have you got a question? Yeah, look, I just think we need to be clear about the different terms that we use. And when we're talking about a consumer, yeah, consumers um, will have experience in a health system, but we also talk about the difference between a consumer representative and a, lived a person with lived experience. Mm. And they may bring different things to the table. Mm. And um, I just want to take you on your point, Ian. Yeah, mm. lot, lots consumers can have, they may be people who are experiencing the health system and also mm. be potential users of the health system. I actually don't think that's a problem. Most people on ethics committees, whether they're researchers or lay people, have had some experience of health services and health systems. And mm. the whole reason that we want to involve people on those committees is to bring a rich discussion to the research process and actually give feedback back to those researchers around how they can improve their consumer and community involvement when they think about their research. So I think yeah. there's a whole conversation we could have uh, around yeah. language yeah. and terminology. Yeah, look, look having, having been involved in the national statement for, for 30 years, I think you have to go back and say, what was the original intention of having a lay, lay person or lay persons on, a, on a HREX, right? And I think we look. We heard yesterday from New Zealand a classic example of you've got all these these boffins on on committees. Maybe they live in <clears throat> live in another world, and that's that's probably quite true. And so you involve the original involvement of lay people. I think on commit HREX is to bring a non a non boffin expertise to the committee. And I just see that people who've had lots of lived experience or consumers have had lots of experience in the health system are not really the not really equivalent to a lay person. The old, the old intention 
of a lay person was someone who'd probably only only ever been near a hospital once in their life, but they were not connected with any of that, but were able to give a different perspective. So they're, in other words, they're not involved in any of it. So I just see maybe there's a the intention of the national statement to have lay people on is sort of being changed a bit by having consumers, but hey, that's just my view. Thank you. Uh, we've got a couple more questions and I think we've got time for maybe one more. So I'm just going to pick mm. one off the off the list here. Uh, and this one's been put forward by Louise. To the point of consumers potentially delaying research through the consultation process, the alternative argument is should the researcher have consulted and developed trusting relationships with re relevant consumer groups? And uh, we recommend this approach for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander research. Mm. And so the, the follow-up point is, I don't believe it increases the review process, but may require the researcher to spend more time during the co-development um, phase prior to the HREC approval. Yeah, look, I, and again, I think uh, for many years, Australia has been working to improve ethical review and remove layers of government. God, that's half my job here in SA Health is we're trying to remove layers of governance to assist researchers and actually timely timely uh, starting of their research. So again, just playing devil's advocate, I can see a situation where the researcher in all good faith has gone out and sold to consumers. And the consumer said X, Y, Z. Comes to the committee and said, well, what have you done about consumer involvement? Someone on the committee said, well, I'm not happy with that. I think you should go and do it again. And you can see this, this loop. Yeah. I think the potential to, when we've been working for many years to improve and, 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 and not, not uh, like, like ride roughshod through reviews and, and speed them up to the extent of rigour, but to try and remove layers of governance. So, again, playing devil's advocate, I just see we have to be careful with that. Mm. Thank you. And thank you for mm. your very uh, okay. productive or controversial. <laughs> so, I'm sure it'll listen, listen more discussion, yes, yes. In this round this morning? Yeah. Okay. Uh